Hello, everybody, and welcome to Shenanigans. How are you guys doing today? Doing pretty good. good. Pretty good. Yeah. Fine. Pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, what's up? How's life? Anyone do anything interesting this week? The poop watch got <laughs> secured. Oh, tell us about it. So basically, the Dodd came in. Uh, Dodd is the director of the officer students, and he's just like, yeah, so the poop watch was pretty stupid, and we didn't catch the guy. But I know it sucks, so we're going to secure it for now. But know that if the perpetrator poops again, <laughs> it's coming back and it's not going away, even if you catch him. So did he perpetrate during the watch? Uh, no, nothing happened. They didn't catch anybody. So it prevented or, pooping. <laughs> it possibly. potentially prevented. Because when they first told us, like, oh, yeah, this has been happening quite a bit. And then when he comes in and gives us the initial story, it's like, oh, yeah, this happened several years ago. And we're all like, oh, you mm. guys made it sound like this is happening on, like, a weekly basis. Mm. That <laughs> the perpetrator was out in force and he was a real fecal felon. <laughs> uh, just like the bow burglar or something. So that came out. So great that we don't have to do it because that is a load of crap. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. because it doesn't have a much better story. In other note, on Friday, someone parked in the XO spot. The XO oh. the officer is the second in command. Don't park there. The MAs, they got really excited and put four boots on the dude's car. So I went out there, and it's just like this freaking Honda out there, <laughs> right in front of the building, with a boot on every tire. <laughs> wow. That's the best thing I saw all week. Do you have civilians in your area? Uh, yeah. Now, is, it, the, is it possible this was a civilian car and they didn't know what they were doing? So every Friday, uh, an enlisted class graduates. Mm -hmm. So we, we thought it's like, oh, some dude's grandma came here and she parked there or something. It's like, oh, I can't wait to go see my grandson. Oh, it's going to be a lovely day. She's like, getting out her walker. She goes around <laughs> and just parks in the exo spot because, you know. She, she doesn't know any better. She thought it was a, it was a handicap, handicap spot. spot right? Yeah. Right, right, literally like one space away from it. I mean, you know, it's, maybe someone else's grandma was parked there. But yeah, <clears> four people <throat> on the car. Absolutely hilarious. Do not park in the exo spot. <laughs> <laughs> we figured that if it parks in the captain's spot, um, there'd be eight boots on the car, <laughs> and it's covered in stickers that are freaking impossible to get off your car. Mm. <laughs> or maybe they just turn the car upside down gently. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. So that's probably what happened if they parked in the command master chief spot. Like, oh, okay. It'd be upside down, or it'd be like in pieces, but like very nicely organized. Which just is they disassemble the entire thing and lay it out. <laughs> yeah, lay it out. <laughs> got an instruction manual but yeah that's that's the uh, shenanigans in the navy life so well you guys certainly have a lot of time on your hands to come up with all of these alliterations and poop puns see sometimes they make us stay later than we really want to like oh yeah friday you don't have any classes after 11 <laughs> yeah screw you guys you still have to stay till 3 30. it's like yeah i understand it's, it's good to study but you keep a bunch of dudes in their 20s locked up in a building until like 3.30 on a sunny Friday afternoon. Mm. <laughs> Nothing's getting done. No. <laughs> Nothing. All right. Well, enough of the Navy life. What about the rest of you guys? Anything interesting happening in your weeks? No, nothing sad happens. All fine. <laughs> what about Max? How, what's up, man? Well, I uh, randomly queued up against a uh, Counter Strike Pro earlier today playing CS Random Queue on Face It. What was his name um, again? Device. Mm. Uh, he was playing with some fans, I think, and uh, randomly queued up with me. So that was fun, but my team actually won 16 to 14. Nice. So Ooh, it was game. pretty clutch. Yeah, pretty clutch. Mm. That was fun. And uh, people writing in chat, oh, please sign my wall on Steam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. How do you feel about Dust 2 being removed from the map pool? Ooh. Well, I think it deserves it. You know, it's been there for too long. And I mean, there's a, just a queue for just playing Dust 2 right now. Mm -hmm. If you want to really play Dust mm -hmm. 2. 
but I think it deserves it because like half of the time, if you queue up for things, it just be dust too half the time. Yeah. So you don't want that. Yeah. To to be fair, when I played, it's been years since I played Counter Strike Go. I hated dust and dust too. <laughs> I wouldn't shed a single tear for the map. <sighs> it's sad to see a giant die, but it has been around for a very long time. Indeed, and there are uh, currently well, there are rumors to be uh, making a new Dust Two map. Well, no, Is that a Dust Three? Yeah, well, no, it's not. No, not a Dust Three. It's a remake for Dust Two. Oh, just oh, with, uh, it's Dust Two, stuff. Two. <laughs> <laughs> dust also, Two, Two. Neil, yeah, yeah. please, yeah. please, a, ga- a wolf, wolf game with a number three in it don't count. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, there, there cannot be a three. there cannot be a Dust Three because then ca- uh, Half Life Three will be confirmed. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, yeah. I can't count. I recently, I recently saw somebody tweeting to Notch for some reason, saying, "Can you confirm uh, Half Life 3? And he was just like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" <laughs> 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 just confirming it, even though Notch, Notch is qu- uh, quite active. If you're uh, watching uh, some big streamers, there's a good chance you uh, that Notch will appear in one of them, mm. and, uh, just in chat. She, he is, he gets around. <laughs> yeah. Good well, I mean, he like retired once he like sold Minecraft, so he's got nothing to do but mess around. All right, let's see. Dust Two came out. It was officially part of the map pool in 1999. That's so an 18 wow. year old map. Oh wow! Crap. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's older than Charos. <laughs> that's funny close enough uh, all right uh zen nick what's up anything going on in your week other than the whole shenanigans of going out in the middle of the night as soon as i get home to test throw distances of various things not really well how far did you throw the five pound water jug 50 feet 50 feet that's pretty good yeah and the 30 pound weight i was only able to get 20 feet the good measurements to have mm. how yeah. how did you throw them ah. just did you just chug them or did you spin and <laughs> release the weight i didn't spin i just did like a a good uh, heave ho like, <laughs> one handed or two handed just one armed one armed one one handed oh. yeah not right. bad. Seems badass. Right. <laughs> Doing it. Oh, oh! By the way, Dust Two is definitely older Should than Evan. That thing. It, it, it is, is old. Old. older than Evan. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's not worry about that either. So, uh, you guys <laughs> are all sitting around in Shenanigans, everyone's favorite bar in Berkshire, everyone's least favorite town. In Drekis, everyone's relatively unknown kingdom that no one gives a shit about. Uh, Least favorite? Please, Neil. It, it has to be the most favorite town in all of Arcadia. Well, everybody hates Berkshire, but they love Desu. <laughs> I think Berkshire just has so many problems. It's it's constantly <laughs> under attack or invaded by this thing or that thing. It's just a, it's a mess of a place. It's a huge headache. I don't think anyone really likes Berkshire except the people that live there. So <laughs> I wanted to say uh, it's a place that anybody is still living here. Yeah, well, you know, there's like a lot of money that comes through here. I mean, Strange jobs get done. Bar, there'd be nothing interesting here. Probably. Yeah. All right. Um, Anywho, you guys are all sitting around a table in the bar. What's going on? I think I take a trip to the general store. Right now? And... I was going to give you guys a moment to chat amongst yourselves first, but we can we can straight hop straight to that if you'd like. Well, I mean, yeah, if let, anyone has anything to say. Does anyone have okay. anything else that's going on? What are your characters doing? Anything interesting? I'm going to conduct an experiment. I'm going to hand uh, Dringus over there, or Droopy as everyone else knows her. I'm just going to hand her like a 50 pound weight and just like, here, hold this real quick. 50 pounds? Yeah, I'm I just, just curious. Well, let me see. Let me see. Like 30 kilos. Mm-hmm. Droopy. Let's see. What, what kind of weights can Droopy lift? 
Eight strength, so I can <laughs> lift. So yeah, I'm literally just gonna like walk up to you, and it's like it's probably like not not great. kilos. Or just like hand it to me, like here, hold this really quick. Let's <laughs> 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 just stand there and watch. Just holding this weight and standing there holding it. How how long do you wait? Until you drop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think after a minute or so, uh, Droopy is dropping it on your foot. Right. Oh, that must hurt. Twenty-two yeah. kilos on your foot. Uh, I. I mean, it's from cold height. From cold height, so maybe not. No. That. No, that fifty pounds would still hurt quite a bit. Mm. So I can jump out of the way in time, Neil? Can I? Uh, What's probably. I tried like, to hit his foot. I yeah, I mean, you're just dropping straight down, so it's going to be difficult to get it on his foot unless he's standing, like, right underneath you. And I'm not moving, like... Yeah, I, I don't... Like, I, you can I've toss it at him, and he'll he'll probably dodge well, it. I'm not too worried about it. So he's going to know, like, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, I'm just dropping it. Okay. All right, cool, cool. All right, good. Thanks. Uh, that's really important. I needed to know that. <laughs> I walk quite slowly <laughs> when I help it. Uh, what about the rest of you? Maximilian, Zen, what are you guys doing around the table? Um, I'm, I'm probably still looking at my fireball scroll. I'm thinking, like, <laughs> I'm never going to learn this, am I? <sighs> That's my not cast. All right, Neil, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's impossible for him to learn the fireball scroll right i know that's why i'm school. like like thinking like this doesn't even make sense <laughs> Just give wait it to Zen. is it because you're an opposed school yes ah uh, so it's probably not that it doesn't make sense it's probably like oh this method of summoning fire is so ridiculous this is the who would ever oh my god trying to evoke things out of thin air you're a conjurer right no, illusionist. An illusionist, okay. Ugh, evoking pure fire. What a plebeian method of dealing with your opponents. Who would ever make a fireball? Ugh, don't you know that it's better to, you know, illusion, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's a philosophical difference. <laughs> it, can, it can actually help. Oh. Yeah, and Neil, I was actually just finished up Demigods. And apparently, with like improved phantasmal force, you could just like cast any spell through it and make it look like you're casting a spell. So you could just knock out people with a fireball. And they have to make uh, illusionary damage. If it would kill you, you have to make a system shock check or die for real because mm. your god believes it. That seems broken. Illusions yeah. are broken, they need to be fixed. <laughs> yeah, whenever I do uh, illusions and uh, shenanigans, they they actually make things worse. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that might just be a, a factor of it being shenanigans more than spells <laughs> being broken. Yeah, it's all good. I mean, really, if you want things to go smoothly, you should just turn down every single quest and hide under the floorboards and never get involved. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's no fun. So, uh, is it time for Zen to go shopping? Is there something else he has to do? I've probably got to put on his makeup, you know, get ready to go shopping, stuff like that. You know, his uh, uh, contact lenses. Oh, contact. <laughs> yeah. oh, th thanks, Bashan. I forgot that. Word. I don't know. I probably just think, well, might as well head to the general store. Hmm. And while he's heading to the general store, Droopy will look for some poisonous herbs around town um there are a few poisonous things lying around town they're usually they're the really like lightly toxic things nothing that's going to kill anyone um you don't grow poisonous plants around town where small children can eat them accidentally uh anything ah, that but are there any laxatives <laughs> <laughs> i think those are probably also prevented you don't want your dog eating some lax laxatives and then coming back into your house Anything that would be uh, that uh, might impose uh, some penalties, and if someone were to be hit with a poison crossbow bolt with it. Well, most plant poisons are things that need to be eaten. They're not really things that can be applied to a weapon. 
I, I can make an I can make poisons uh, with my herbalism. So if I have to the right plants, I could. Right, you could make poisons that people could eat and then suffer um, all sorts of things. Right, you could get here. I'm going to link you the poison chart in Zoom, um, and this lists the poisons that we're using for this campaign. Mm. Um, so most of the, as you can see, the the plant poisons that are listed here. Um, these are just samplings. So the plants okay. are almost all ingestion, and then there are a couple of contacts, but those are irritating things, not actual uh, like hurting things. Uh, irritating, but irritating could be annoying in combat, right? Yeah, uh, it would give a I penalty of two. I'd say uh, it also yeah. make uh, spellcasters just like get absolutely wrecked. Yeah, mm -hmm. spellcasters would have to make a willpower check to or cast spells. Can I, can I find uh, some? This Thistle leaves. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Let's see if there are any thistle leaves or stitch berries around. Um. Yeah. They're not in town because these are like really irritating things you don't want to brush up against. It'd be like growing poison ivy in the village. But outside of shenanigans, you're pretty sure you could find some. Uh, definitely not anywhere in town. Hmm. Okay. Uh, not uh, how far outside of town? Just... I don't know. Why don't you take a walk by yourself into the woods? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds like great. I will and not then, uh, get killed by a random displacer beast. I, I, I will not go far. Maybe m m in max fifty feet from the village borders. Just a little stroll at the edge of the village. Yeah. The well, I mean, the village borders are poorly defined, right? It's kind of like farmland. This is kind of a yard, and there's like an out thing out there. So it's really. If you just walk around on the perimeter, let's see if you find anything. Why don't you roll me a D... You have an herbalism proficiency, so I'll just say you can find these things without having to make a check, but we'll just see if there's anything around. So why don't you roll me a D20, and uh, on a 15 or higher, there is, there's either thistle leaf or stitch berry nearby. No. Okay. Not, just a, a quick look around without exposing yourself to the yeah. dangers of the woods. You don't find anything. Okay. Um... All right. Uh, meanwhile, Zen heads to the general store. What are you doing in the general store, Zen? I go up to the guy and ask if he has managed to sell the continual lightstone. Oh, I forgot all about that. You know, I did. There was a, a miller coming here looking to buy a bunch of oil to refill all of his flasks because he you know, runs the mill light and, night and day. And I told him, instead of buying oil, why don't you buy this magic rock that never stops glowing? Uh, mm. He was on board. Totally on board. Mm. Um, took a little while to negotiate a price with him, though. He didn't like my initial offer of 20 GP. And we had to work it down to a, a more reasonable something a miller could actually afford as a lifetime investment of 5 GP. Um, I bet I could sell it for a lot more to someone who had more money, though. So uh, he shuffles around and pulls out um, 25 silver and slides it over the table to you and goes, here's your share. All right. So are you interested in buying more stones from me? And for oh, what price? Um, hmm. Scratches his beard. I made uh, 25 silver off this one. Bet be harder to sell it to a richer person because they don't come here. What we really need is a door to door lightstone salesman. Hey, that's an idea. I can draw up a list and map of all the wealthy houses in town, and then together we can go house to house trying to sell lightstones. It's a revolutionary marketing mm. idea. Just walking up to people and trying to sell them things. Hmm. Might get a little rough, though. Some of these people might sick their dogs on us. Uh, do we got something to deal with dogs? I may be able to bring a dog of my own. I don't know how that helps, but you're a wizard, so I'll trust you on that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this guy sounds like me. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, in the meantime, I'm happy to continue holding them for you and giving you half price. Or uh, giving you half the profit. Hmm. All right. So I hand him like 10. Okay. Ooh. His eyes go wide and he hurries and stuffs all 10 of them into a sack and shoves it under a table. All right. Excellent. Uh, let me know if you want to go door to door selling. Right. Right. All right. Well, I actually do have another plan. So I want to make my way over to the, uh, blacksmith mm -hmm. any blacksmith and uh, pitch him the idea of creating a lantern that doesn't actually have any spot for burning oil but just to, like has a hood or some sort of thing to block out the light so mm -hmm. that they could just lift up a little hood and then have the continual light stone active or inactive with the hood down that sounds like a task for Cog wrench hammer bench. Mm. Everyone's favorite gnome and <laughs> inventor. <laughs> All right, so I head over there. Make sure it uses eels as we kind of those are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Melissa isn't here, so I can't really get more eels. You find Cog wrench hammer bench hard at work. Uh, he's currently trying to weld things together using fire, and it's not working. And by fire, I mean, like, he's got some coal burning and he's holding two pieces of metal over it. <clears throat> he looks at you as you come in and goes, Ah! Welcome, friend! It's been a while since I've seen you. Uh, come in, come in! Yes, I have another idea for you. Mm hmm Imagine a lantern... Which instead of burning oil just holds a continual light stone and a hood that can be raised or lowered to reveal the light or snuff it out. That makes perfect sense. Wait, aren't hooded lantern already a thing? Shouldn't we? It should be easy to build with a few pens. <laughs> Such Stop. innovation. <laughs> I would make a terrible gnome, just for the record. Oh, oh we broke the gnome. Um, uh, if you give me a, uh, a sample of the stone, I could make a call it um, a, a prototype. While you head home, you can come back the next day. And it should be here for with which you to play. Don't mind my <laughs> syntax or grammar. Common is my not my it. native tongue, and so sometimes I stammer. <laughs> <laughs> I hand him a pebble. <laughs> um, okay, how big is this pebble? Out of curiosity, like fist size, like coin size, just... d twenty sized. I mean, it's okay. So it's you were talking kinda... small thing, all right? Okay. Yeah, uh, he... like sling bullet size. I don't know. Sure. He takes it. Um, says, and uh, <clears throat> as for my fee, doing this sort of work isn't free. Uh, you must understand, it, it takes a lot of time and metal to come up with these. Uh, Various inventions, and I've before had to melt down my tea kettle. That was an unfortunate day. Oh man, you had a meltdown. <laughs> Dangerous. I do say. So, how much to create the prototype of the lantern? I think 50 gold should suffice. That would be quite nice. <laughs> you know what they say the first one is expensive, and all the others are cheap. Those are the benefits that one from investments that one reap <laughs> might reap. <laughs> Prototypes are costly. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly. Okay. Well. Oh, okay. Mm. I guess I hand him fifty gold. 
his eyes light up as you hand him the gold, <laughs> and he oh, runs God. to do as he's told. So you basically gave a gnome go to invent something which is already invented. <laughs> Lantern. <laughs> well, specifically a lightproof one. Yeah. Any yeah. continual light stone that's always on. Hooded or bullseye lanterns already exist. Uh, bullseye lanterns are like the big things you would have on like a lighthouse, I think. No, no or is that? No, no that's, uh, oh, that's that's a beacon lantern. Yeah, bullseye yeah. lanterns already exist, but you know they exist. They're a little bit different. The, the mechanics are there, but you now want something maybe a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact that can hold a stone. You're gonna have to cut corners here, and you can do all sorts like... of different things. And he's a gnome, so he's gonna do a really interesting job of it. Like a pocket lan lantern, basically. Um, yeah, maybe something like that. We'll see what he comes up with. Um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All right. So much for your money uh, for research, then. I mean, yeah. who really needs well. money and shenanigans? What are you guys doing with it anyway? Hoarding it for no real yeah, purpose? I mean, I mean I'm planning on buying a house to actually keep some stuff in, but you know. Yeah. You're not going to stay at Shenanigans anymore? <laughs> what? I mean, I'll hang out there, but it's like when you got to keep something <sighs> secret. Traitor. I just. Desmond's going to be heartbroken. How is he sp <laughs> supposed to pay rent when you won't pay rent to him? <laughs> don't, don't worry. Wait, don't I better. mean, I already <laughs> just make my own ale, so. <laughs> I know, and he, you're, you're bleeding him dry, man. At this point, you're just going to be loitering in his establishment. You're going to bring in your own food, your own drink. You're not going to spend the night there. You're just going to take up the seat of a ser of a paying customer. <laughs> um, okay. All right, so everyone gathers back into shenanigans after all of this. Uh, droopy can't find his poisons, and maybe his face is a little droopy yeah. because of that. Zen has paid an outrageous amount of money to a gnome to invent him something that sort of already exists, but damn it, this is going to be interesting. Um, I believe yeah, well, the rock is probably lifting rocks right now. Uh, that, and I, I did my very important experiment with Droopy. Right, right. Uh, and... That was that's very important. And Maximilian is maybe still staring at a fireball scroll, muttering to himself uh, about why fireballs are stupid. Yeah, I probably am talking to some uh, patrons here, saying that, oh, I can make a fireball illusion. It will be much more effective. It actually won't kill him. Well, maybe. But anyways, <laughs> the thing is that, um, you know, invocations, they are very, very, very bad. Very bad. Very destructive. So it explodes real big, and you don't want that to happen, especially so in shenanigans. So at what point do you accidentally set off the scroll? I can bounce. Yeah. Three minutes. Okay. Um, anything else going on in, in the bar? No, I'm probably just looking at like the jug. The with, jug. Like, half a thing of like like half full of lamp oil and just thinking need some strong whiskey for this by the way Nia, what did anything come out out of the dave encounter what, at the end of last time where we made it showed everyone how much dog carcasses he had in his wagon uh, yeah, I, I cast darkness on him and he crashed his wagon. No, no. The founding principle of shenanigans is that no matter what happens next week, everything continues as normal the next week. It's it's like a <laughs> sitcom. Right. There's no real <laughs> consequences in the world. I'm sorry, what was that? There are no real consequences for the town in the game. The player so characters can... can die miserably and horribly over and over again. So I can just start launching the uh, giant, you know, oily fireballs everywhere. Well, yeah, no I mean, if you start throwing, like, fireballs around town, you'll probably just... get killed. But then next week, the town will be, like, under reconstruction. And by two weeks later, everything will be back to normal. Um, but you'll die continual... in the process. We'll One start thing... continual lighting the, the most Im town. The, the most important thing is that you don't hit shenanigans. Everything is fine until you hit the shenanigans with a fireball. Or the wizard academy. Yeah, or, or break anything in the world that needs to be there for the next week. Um, <laughs> the, the whole town really has plot armor. Oh, oh man. 
And oh, I'm talking like DM hacks level of plot armor. <laughs> like the level of plot armor where you s set shenanigans on fire when nobody else is around and a lightning bolt comes out from the sky and murders you. No save. <laughs> yeah. We got to we gotta keep the town functioning. Anyway. Here's my test. Hopefully. How is Ben's brothel doing after we just exterminated a ghost? And oh, you got rid of the like ghost! They're back! And their prices are raised because now Ben's brothel is uh, ghost-free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Special sure. ghost-free soup. No one else I can bet. offer you spirit-free soup. I bet the ghost is still there. there. <laughs> oh, there's probably another one. <laughs> Alright. So, you guys all right. are all hanging out. Mm. Uh... When who should come in through the door but Lizzie, Desmond's wife. Uh, mm. She walks in and says, uh, or comes over to Desmond, and they start talking to one another. He gives a, a uh -oh. nod and motions in your direction, kind of like, oh, Desmond go good to busted. them. And Lizzie comes over to the, the four of you and says, so Desmond tells me you guys have been sitting around all day doing nothing. Taking up seats to paying customers, and you guys need a job so that you can buy more ale and food. What? I, I'm entertaining the, the patrons here. You're bothering the patrons. <laughs> How would you know that? Because Desmond said four of them left after you were talking to them. Oh, did they leave? They, yes. <laughs> yes. No, don't worry, I'm still buying things. Good. Then you don't have to do this, but you probably should anyway. I'll probably get bored anyway and break something accidentally. We've already had to replace two chairs this month because of you. Uh, it's Desmond's fault, really. Believe me, <laughs> I know. Okay, <laughs> anywho. <laughs> so you, you're familiar with my, my daughter, right, Layla? Mm -hmm. She's uh, 13 or 14 or 12, something like that. I can't quite remember. It doesn't even matter to the story. Uh, <laughs> But apparently, she has been getting moonshine from some guy out in the woods. We found her with a whole wineskin of it under her bed. And look, I understand kids are going to do weird things. They're going to do drugs. They're going to start drinking. But she is too young to be drinking moonshine from a crazy old man in the woods. So I need the Can four of you some? to go put an end to the moonshining operation. Uh, I ask and Cobalt, uh, I look up to her. Bury him? So. Whatever it takes. <laughs> this man Whatever. should not be serving alcohol to my daughter. She's too young. Droopy and it's star, way too strong. Have, do you still have the wine skin? Oh, God, no. I, I poured it out. I, I haven't been able to taste anything ever since I tried a sip of it. What a waste. <laughs> Pour it out. Given to, to one of the patrons. Mm -mm, the stuff will burn your tongue off or make you go blind or something. It was awful. Way too strong. Way too strong. Look, I like a strong drink, but that was way too strong. You should have used it for cleaning. I don't Rolling want to burn alcohol. down the bar. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> or the house. Or the dog house. Or all the small people that still live inside the bar. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, oh, yeah, that's not a nice way to speak about dwarves, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, there were dwarves inside the bar. But yeah, I know. They're there. frequent visitors and patrons. And they you know, pay like, with good money. They tip I mean, very well. You no, know, you know that like that, that piece of wood on top? The bar? Remember when we had, yeah, on the, yeah, inside the bar. There's also fairies in there. You know, this hey, isn't the first time. Never mind. Sometimes the, sometimes <laughs> the craziest thing is the truth. Absolutely. Like that crazy old man in the woods that needs to be stopped before he continues selling alcohol to minors. Don't worry, I've got a solution for that. I just Alcohol is <laughs> never a solution. Except well, I mean, when it's a solution. Yeah, it can be, but... Yeah, I, I mean, it is, but it's not, you know. Okay, you say alcohol isn't a solution, yet your husband runs a bar. <laughs> it's not a solution for problems, but it's you know it can be an entertaining and enjoyable social lubricant. Well, like I said, are I you have to... sure it's not a solution for how to make money? And it involves a giant rock. Work? How's that sound? Uh, I, I, are you a giant rock? Because sure, I mean yeah. no. If it involves making you bigger, let's not do it. 
but if it involves you holding a rock over a man's head and threatening him with well, pain I mean, of death it. and dismemberment for selling alcohol I mean, to my underage daughter, then I mean, yes, I that's fine. This rock. So are we killing him or just threatening to make sure he doesn't sell alcohol to children? Look, I don't want to know the details. I just want to be assured that he's not going to be passing off his crazy mountain man moonshine to my 12, 13, or 14-year-old daughter I really should remember when I gave birth to her. We can bury him. Doesn't need to be that. Don't, I don't want to know, okay? Just, just solve the problem and make it go away. Okay? And, and in exchange... Is... Alright, yeah, reward, reward, right. She kind of looks yes, at you guys, at, at what you're holding on to. Oh, you, none of you are huntsmen. Hmm. I have a crossbow. I was gonna give you some magic arrows, but none of you have any bows, so... How about magic bullets? No, I don't have any of those. How about cash? Cash. That's sure, sure. That's nice and vulgar. Um, let's say I don't know what's the price of milk these days. Uh, Fifty GP, hundred hundred GP. Each. Solve this problem of mine without telling me any of the details. You know, plausible deniability. Each. Total. Each. Total. Yeah, it's twenty-five each. Good enough. More than Desmond pays. Yeah, well, and free drinks for a week. Bar. Free room and oh, board that. and 100 gold. All right, there we go. Okay. okay that's, that's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> Done. That's, that's pretty good. Mm. Uh, right. I, I go up to her. Poison plants. I told you I don't want to know. <laughs> mm. No reward. Poison plants. Okay. Uh, free room and board, and I'll show you where some poison plants are. That's a good deal. No, no. Cash. Cash. Uh, why don't you guys him. sort this problem out and then come tell me what you've decided? All right? Cash. And she, she walks off to the bar to let you guys sort out these details on your own. Okay, so 75 gold cash split between Zen, Maximilian, and The Rock. And Droopy just gets poisonous plants. Sounds good to me. You cash my plans. I mean, she okay. offered one deal or the other. I don't know if you're going to be able to get her to do both. Yeah, I... Does Droopy I, have 75 gold to hand out to his friends? <laughs> no. All right, I go and pitch her that no. deal. Pitch her the he, 75 plus poison plants? Yeah, poison plants for him. Do you really want that kobold running around with his poisonous things? Seriously, I mean, like, reward money aside, do you feel comfortable with that? Would you trust your drink ever again? Think about it. Really, look at him. He's always talking about burying people, and now he wants poison plants? Don't you think there's a little, uh, something sketchy going on there? <laughs> Aren't you well, worried that you're going to not wake up one day? You know, that because he likes me. Things. Okay. You might get a little long, but do you feel comfortable morally giving this guy access to poison? Like, isn't that a pretty sketchy ethical moment? You assume that while we're out in the woods, he's not just going to find some as we're looking for the. You know, guy. I can't get it. I can't stop him from finding him on his own. But you know, it's can't. I just feel a little awkward helping such a. Cute. Look at him, he's a kobold. It's kind of adorable, but like his she. people are she, she 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 I can't look. They all look the same to me, all right? If if she took off her clothes, maybe I could <laughs> see gender, but all kobolds are you know, how do you tell them apart? But, you know, it's like All right, if you are if you feel comfortable letting her have you know, giving her poisonous things, then I can do 50 in the poison plants. Yeah, just the 100. All right. Find poison plants she for her. goes to shake your hand. Yeah. All right. Deal is struck. 
Uh, why don't we take a break? And when we come back from break, we will start on the adventure to finding the crazy old man in the woods who's selling alcohol to underage teens. See you guys on the other side of the break. Bye-bye. <laughs> 